Hello, scholars. This video is to introduce you to Cornell Notes. Uh, it's a great method of note taking that I believe will help students to take and organize their notes. Fairly a nice tool. This tool can be used for both lecture, slideshow, movie, and reading notes. So you will be able to find these notes in your graphic organizers folder on the drive. So you go into the graphic organizers folder and then they'll be in two places. They'll be in lecture and reading. So great tool for both of those tasks, reading and lecture. So as I always say to my students, when you take notes, it's really, really important for you to put your name and the date. Um, you may also want to put what quarter you're in. So if you are studying your notes in the library and you take them out of your notebook, uh, the library, and you forget them because you're so worried about studying for your exam and then taking your exam or your test or your quiz, you might leave them in the library inadvertently. So put your first and last name always on every paper so that they don't get misplaced or if they get misplaced they can be returned to you. Always always put the date. It will help you stay organized when studying for future quizzes, tests, um, exams, midterms, and finals. You can also label it by quarter. So you know quarter one and quarter two you'll be using to study for your midterm exams, quarter three and quarter four notes, uh, reading and lecture notes you'll be using to study for your final. Okay, so Cornell notes, as I said, are great for lecture, reading chapters, even fiction, um, articles, uh, PowerPoints, whatever. It's really, really important that you know what topic your notes are going to be about, and it shouldn't just be chapter one. Okay, you want to give your notes a really specific focus. Um, so I'm going to model a little mini lecture I might use with my students for symbolism. Okay, so what is your purpose or objective? You always want to go back to that SWOBOT that you probably learned maybe even in elementary or middle school. Um, students will be able to. So you should always have that echoing in your head. What is it that the teacher wants me to be able to do, to be able to know? Okay, so for this one, we're defining, identifying, analyzing symbols. You want to have an essential question that guides you through why and how do authors use symbolism? Okay, so these will change based on um, what subject you're doing um, and what your teacher's uh, objectives are. Okay, so with Cornell Notes, you want to preview how, whenever you can. Preview is a really important verb for Cornell Notes. So whenever you have the opportunity to scan a chapter, look at those chapter headings. If your teacher gives you PowerPoints, look at those bold face words. If uh, he or she gives you a handout or study guide questions, turn those guiding questions um, and use them or use those guiding questions to propel your um, note taking. So a, Cornell Notes is a two column organizer. So because our objective is to define, a teacher will probably start with a question. What you wanna do is you wanna put the question in the left hand column. Any questions or keywords will go in the left hand column. So you wanna, what is a symbol for example? We need to define it, that's part of our objective. It was in the objective, so a symbol. You can then go back and highlight these notes. So you know that symbol is important, you can make it stand out, okay, highlight it. You can color up your Cornell notes just like you would color up uh, a text that you were annotating. So we understand that an, uh, a symbol is an object color animal that is repeated throughout a text to develop character personality, conflicts, theme setting, or an important idea. Um, one of the other components of Cornell Notes is I really encourage students to use visuals whenever they can, especially if they have identified themselves as a visual learner. So if you can make like a quick little graphic to remind yourself of something that was important, like a little light bulb, for idea, 
um, that would be great. Anytime you can add your own flair to your notes, you're going to make your notes more meaningful and purposeful for yourself. Yeah, so I can't stress enough the importance of kind of personalizing your notes, using colors, using images whenever you possibly can to kind of really make that knowledge go into your brain. Okay, now don't worry if you're not an artist, which I'm completely not, which is why I kind of cheated and uh, went to Google Images. Um, stick figures are fine. Anything, any little symbol that is going to make you remember what you're learning about will be fantastic. Okay, so once you identify the topic, what is the symbol, the teacher will probably go through this, uh, and you'll just kind of continue to follow along in your notes. Okay, so now it might get a little bit more specific. So maybe the teacher will say, what symbols are found in Lord of the Flies? Okay, so let's say in this hypothetical situation, the students are reading Lord of the Flies. Notice I abbreviate Lord of the Flies. I highly encourage students to abbreviate, to simplify your notes. As long as you know the abbreviations and they're pretty obvious, that will be a great help for you. So in Lord of the Flies, the glasses of Piggy, Piggy's glasses are symbolic. So you don't have to write complete sentences for your notes. Again, really, really make them your own. Um, so we have Piggy's glasses here. We would probably spend some time talking about that. Uh, remember, you're basing this on the teacher's lecture. So what do glasses represent? Well, sometimes they represent intelligence. Piggy is an intelligent character. He's always trying to plan and organize. They represent kind of nerdiness. When you're a nerd, you, you tend to be a victim and Piggy becomes a victim of uh, Jack. Um, they represent civilization because only in civilized society can you have prescription glasses. So uh, keep in mind, I would say symbols must repeat so during this lecture. So um, why symbol not a metaphor? Symbols repeat. Okay. And that's important. So you have to really pay attention to lectures. Um, I often recommend that students with the permission of the teacher record le lectures. That's a great use of your technology, but you must get permission from the teacher first. Don't just assume the teacher wants you to record and, and uh, really tell him or her that you want to be able to go back and review. Okay. So the final step and probably the most important is depending on how you are like me, I tend to write really big. Um, you can reproduce this graphic organizer on a sheet of notebook paper. I like to organize mine with lines, um, dividing the ideas. So again, helps with organization. But if you use a notebook paper, you can kind of do this at your own pace. For this, if you write smaller, you can make the boxes a little bit smaller so that your notes are compartmentalized. So if you didn't need that whole um, section, you could just make more boxes this way, okay? Um, I only put two on each page for the template, but again, you could use notebook paper and make it even um, more space. So final section, really important section would be the summary. So based on whatever notes are on that page, however many um, rows you might have had, um, you want to summarize in your own words what you learned, okay? So if you were going to teach this to someone else, what would you say about what you learned about symbolism? Um, it could be two or three sentences. It could be bulleted point sentences. You want to get the three key ideas. So continue to practice with this form of note taking. Uh,
watch the video a couple times. I know it's a little slow paced. It's purposefully slow so that you can kind of go back and review. There are also some YouTube videos on Cornell Notes that I will link um, in the videos folder at some point so that you can review other styles as well. Okay, thanks.